All right, so this is it, the new Sony 20 to 70 millimeter f4 lens. And this is probably gonna be a little bit weirder review for me because typically I'd be starting things out with some insane shoot. Throwing out some really cool test results and giving you guys some real world impressions from using this out in the field. This time, it's different. So this time I feel like the bigger question and probably the more important question, who is this lens for? And is it even worth buying? And the reason that everything is kind of backwards in this solely comes down to the focal length. So this is a 20 to 70 millimeter f4 lens. And in some ways, it doesn't really have any competition because it's the only 20 to 70 millimeter lens. And in other ways, it really competes with just about every other mid-range zoom on the market, which is the problem. So here are the specs before we get into the results of this. It is a 20 to 70 millimeter focal length, which we'll dive into a lot more because it's a bigger deal than I first thought. It's an F4 aperture. It is really compact. Like, look at this. Even compared to like the Tamron lens, this is a 28 to 75 millimeter F2.8. This is only 488 grams, 72 millimeter front filter thread, has two XD linear motors. Maximum magnification is 0.39 times. So actually decent macro performance for a zoom. And there's some big hardware upgrades. So you have an AF switch on it. You have dual custom buttons. You have an aperture ring. And it also has a lock, which I'm a huge fan of because I don't really use these aperture rings. You also have dust and moisture resistance just all over this lens. So there are really about two big hesitations with this lens. So one is that there are like five different choices of 24 to 70 ish mid range zoom lenses. You got Sigma, you got Tamron, you got Rokinon. Even Sony has a 24 to 70 F4 that's actually cheaper than this. And the second is that a lot of those lenses are actually going to be F2.8 lenses. So this begged the question to me, and really the biggest question about this lens is that extra few millimeters on the wide end going to be worth the higher price and the F4 aperture? So the short answer is if you already own or plan on owning a wide angle lens, like a 16 to 35, probably not. You'd probably be better off with like an F2.8 zoom, which is what I would typically recommend. But if you don't already own one of those or just want a single lens that can do everything, it gets complicated, especially if you shoot video. So these days, 24 millimeters with video isn't 24 millimeters because cameras like the Sony a7 IV come with active stabilization for better IBIS performance, but that crops in the frame. And then you have this brand new focus breathing compensation, which is an awesome feature, but it crops into the frame. And then you might be adding like a post stabilization, whether it's through Catalyst Browse, using the gyro data from the camera, or you're using like an editing software. But either way, that's an additional crop. So if you're shooting video, you're losing a lot of that wide angle. So getting it back with that 20 millimeter focal length is a pretty big deal. And photographers, you might have to not worry about all of those crops, but cameras have gotten really big resolution bumps. So usually you can crop in quite a bit. You even have APS-C modes that are actually useful now. So if you need a little bit more reach on the long end, you can get it, but there's no magic button that just makes your lens wider. So the only way to do that is to change lenses or get a wider angle lens. So now the question begins, is it any good? So let's find out. Now I definitely expected this lens to be sharp, but this is like insanely sharp, like wide open at 70 millimeters. It looks even better than my 24 to 70 GM2 with both of these lenses at F4, which is insane because this lens is so good, but even going wider all the way to 20 millimeters, in the center, this is just a really good lens. And I also threw it up against the lens that I usually recommend in this price range or below $1,000, which is the Tamron 28 to 75. And with both of these at F4, the Sony is still sharper, but I can really only tell at about 200%. And this is using the 50 megapixel Sony A1. So you won't notice this quite as much if you're using just a little bit less resolution camera. 
So the other thing I wanted to compare is the focal length. And that's because a lot of lenses just don't give you the focal length that you're supposed to be getting. And if you're getting this for a 20 millimeter, I wanted to make sure it actually looks like 20 millimeters. And from my test, this actually, if anything, looks wider than it would suggest. That's partly because if you compare it to like the Tamron 28 to 75, the Tamron is more like 29, 30 millimeters in my test. But it's also because this lens has the advantage of looking wider, which comes at a little bit of a cost, and that's distortion. So on the wide end, it's pretty bad, and since this is an early sample, I don't actually have a profile correction for Lightroom for this lens just yet. So to show you like what this would look like before and after, I took the image in JPEG as well, which we'll use in-camera distortion correction, and it's a massive difference. Now, distortion correction is on by default for JPEGs and video. In fact, you can't actually turn it off. So the only time that you will even see this uncorrected will be if you're shooting raw where it gets applied in post. But you're definitely gonna wanna keep it on. I mean, literally look at the difference between this and the 20 millimeter f1.8, which I use all the time, I love that lens. And the difference in distortion is massive. But just look how wide this new lens is. I mean, I actually think it's measuring maybe one millimeter wider than most of those other lenses, like the 20 millimeter. And one millimeter wider on a wide angle lens is noticeable. Also, bokeh looks really good on this lens. It's nice, it's soft, it's very round. It does have just a little bit of that kind of onion look to it if you zoom all the way in, but nothing too terrible at all. And flare is very well controlled as well in my tests. Uh, Sony actually usually does a very good job of that. And that big question of if you could actually tell the difference in wideness from this and a 24 to 70 or the 28 to 75, it's a major difference, so if you really need that wider end, this is definitely going to get it for you. Now, autofocus speed, it's not gonna be an issue. I mean, this is a light lens. It's not moving a whole lot of heavy glass, and it is two linear motors, so linear XD motors, and it is fast, it is silent, and at f4, you're just really not dealing with that super shallow depth of field anyway. But let's talk about video, because honestly, this is going to be one of the more compelling reasons to get this lens. And that's because Sony doesn't have the best IBIS performance on their cameras, although the a7R5 did get better. But every other camera so far, Sony has some of the worst IBIS performance to me. So a few years ago, they pushed this active stabilization, which I honestly don't know exactly how they're stabilizing it digitally, but I'm almost positive it's at least using gyro data from the camera and not just like digitally analyzing the image like some other electronic stabilization systems. But that comes with a 10% crop. So with this lens, you can shoot with all of those features on and get a still slightly wider than 24 millimeter focal length, or you can turn all of that off and get the 20 millimeter kind of super wide end and so this gives you an advantage for video compared to like a 24 to 70. Plus for video, I tend to shoot like a little bit more stop down, so I'm okay with F4. Plus it has things like aperture wheels, it has solid autofocus performance, it has the focus breathing compensation that doesn't work with third-party lenses or even some of like Sony's older lenses. So you have to use very particular new Sony lenses to even get it. So that's a huge advantage to have with this lens Although honestly, I tested focus breathing and it's not horrible on this. So it is not as bad as a lot of lenses. So don't be afraid to turn it off. But for me, for video, having this 20 millimeter wide angle, it just felt like so much more of an advantage for video than even for photos. So the question is, should you actually buy this lens? And seriously guys, I read all of your comments. So let me know what you think. While you're there, hit like, notification bell, subscribe. It really goes a long way. I so appreciate it. But I have a couple scenarios for you. So I have actually used this lens a lot more than I thought. I use it a lot for like my BTS videos. So anytime I'm shooting another video, this is on my behind the scenes camera for sure. I usually would use like a 24 to 70 or 28 to 70 for that, but with active stabilization and the other crops on, you just don't get that wide end. So having this 20 millimeter advantage 
was really big. And I also found myself just using it for weddings and just a lot more than I expected because of that wider advantage. But if you're not big on video, the new f2.8 lenses from like Sigma and Tamron, like this one right here, have gotten so good that if you're a photographer, especially if you already own a wide angle lens or think that you might get like a 16 to 35 someday, at $1,100, it might be a tougher sell. And I think having like an f2.8 zoom for less money is probably a bigger advantage. I actually have a video comparing a bunch of those, the f2.8 zooms, including Sony's original 24 to 70 G Master, which just hit a massive price drop. So go check that out if you want to. Now, if you're like a one lens person, so you just want one lens to travel around, you don't take a lot of other lenses, you don't wanna swap lenses, I would probably get this one instead. But otherwise, I think it's mostly video shooters who have the main reason to buy one. But seriously, guys, these next few months, they are going to be insane. So follow me on IG, turn on notifications, hit me up in the comments. I'll see you guys soon in a new video or maybe NAB, I'm actually thinking of going this year. I have never been. My trip got canceled the last time for COVID, so let me know if we should make it happen, and maybe I'll see you guys there.